Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here, and it's new knife time. Our favorite time of the week. It's that time. Where we look at the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. Let's check them out. All right, first thing up this week is not actually a knife, but we've got some blades on it. A new, less expensive version of the Leatherman Raptor. This is the Raptor Response folding medical shears. I guess all shears technically fold, but they don't just, you know, the handles don't fold up as well. Um, but they've, uh, they've done a few things to this to, uh, to bring the price down just by a little bit. Uh, they've simplified it a little bit too. Uh, no longer do you have a glass breaker here and you don't have the extra little hook shaped blade that would uh, swing out, but might be a little more kind of robust feeling or durable as a result. The handles themselves certainly feel very comfortable and very sturdy, even despite the uh, the folding mechanism right there. Very robust set of shears themselves. Got serrated uh, or a fine tooth serration pattern here that's gonna help grab onto clothing. Uh, so it's not gonna slip out like some types of scissors out there. Uh, you do have some multi-tool capability baked into this as well. This is Leatherman after all. Uh, they have to do more than just the shears aspect. Uh, O2 wrench here at the bottom pocket clip for carrying. And very interestingly, small section right here at the base, they call it a ring cutter. Um, I guess that would be if this is a medical situation, like a wedding ring. That uh, hurts me just to think about it. Uh, if they're gonna have to remove something like that, it's a dire situation indeed. So pretty sure you could probably use that for like a wire breaker and stuff like that as well. But you've got that little sharp edge right here from one edge of the scissor and a little jaw to hold onto it. So very cool. Few different colors of this are available. Uh, 70 or yeah, just under 70 bucks. So it's about 10 bucks cheaper uh, than the other version. Very solidly built piece of kit for sure. All right, next up, we are debuting a new knife uh, for us here today. Knife Center is the exclusive dealer for this knife. This is, if you couldn't already tell, you could recognize the style pretty easily. A Daniel Winkler folding knife. This is the Rats Six. Uh, and it comes in about 200 bucks from Boker, made in Italy. The blade, very distinctive, uh, upswept trailing point, very Winkler style there. Uh, pretty much immediately recognizable if you're familiar with his work at all. Three and a quarter inches, high flat grind with a stonewashed finish and 690 steel. Real solid stuff. But speaking of solid, that handle, man, there is a lot to hold on to with this guy. Gray linen micarta. Looks really good, has a nice feel in the hand too, good matte type of texture. This is gonna be a fantastic workhorse knife. Anything you need, a solid grip on. Obviously, if you got, fixed blade is always a good option, but if you can't carry a fixed blade for one reason or another, very solid here indeed. Standard pocket clip, right side tip up only. Liner lock, just real solid, man. As far as the grips that work, it really likes a slightly pointed forward grip with your thumb up there on the, uh, the thumb ramp, choke back a little bit, brings the tip down, fits into my hand really nicely. Of course, everyone's hands gonna be a little bit different, but for me, kind of a choked up grip, a little bit less comfortable, but it still is gonna work really well. I like to choke up right past the, uh, the flipper here, because this is a flipper knife, so I can get my pinky right inside the, uh, the end of the beak here, and at that point, I've got a really solid feel on it. Really feels like I could push through a heavier task if needed. But let's talk about that flipper for a second. Ball bearings in the pivot. You've got the thumb studs and the flipper. Flipper works really, really well. And the thumb studs, in kind of like a, a hinderer-esque fashion in a way, the thumb studs work as the stop pins. They contact the thick liners there. I mean, just check out how thick those are to arrest the motion of the blade. As for their usage as thumb studs, also to me, kind of like a hinderer, you can use them, but it's a little bit easier to use the uh, the flipper there. Uh, although I, I may have contradicted myself there just a little bit. I think I just found the angle where it really works well. Really solid pieces, individually numbered. As you can see, this one right here, 171 of 300. So these aren't gonna be around forever, but we're gonna be really happy while they are still here because this is a really, really cool design. All right, next we have another Boker. This is the M4 Sherman, named for the blade steel. We've got a Damascus blade here, but it was actually made with restored parts 
or, or parts uh, salvaged from some Sherman tanks in Virginia, actually, by a museum there. Uh, as they were restoring them, they kept some of the material and sent them over to Germany, to Boker, who used them in this particular knife. Really cool. We've seen them use uh, some kind of German military history stuff, uh, but some folks obviously have a little bit of an aversion to that sort of thing. They're bringing it home with, uh, with an American medal on this particular knife. Cool story behind it. Uh, price is about 360, definitely a premium priced piece, but I think a piece that's gonna be very useful for EDC. Blade, straight clip point, high or a full flat grind and just under three inches long. It's got a really capable shape for light to medium duty EDC needs. On the back here, you'll see some, you know, we just mentioned hinderer, some kind of hinderer-esque features too. Frame lock, stainless steel, in this case, not titanium, but we do have his signature uh, lock stabilizer disc there on the back. There's just enough length on that handle for a solid grip. And as far as carrying it in the pocket goes, I really like the way they did the clip. It's a folded deep carry clip and the way it mates into the handle is very nicely done. We've got an inset pocket, so it sits flush with the rest of the handle. And then you've got flush mounted screws as well. So nothing to snag on when you're going back into the pocket. You can see this one also is numbered. This one right here is 479. Ball bearings in the pivot on this guy, along with the thumb studs and that nice brown burlap there for the front scale, or front handle, I should say. It's not a, a scale type construction. Really, really cool piece, actually. Really digging it. Blade pops open really nicely. You've got a really fancy look here. Well, it's kind of fancy meets rugged with that burlap. Really nice combination. Very capable for its size and very cool. All right, next up, another exclusive to talk about, a new version of the RMJ Tactical Coho. This comes in also at about 200 bucks. Standard blade shape, but the orange and black fluted G10 handles here, of course, are the Knife Center exclusive colors. Has a really nice small handle. Think of it like the, uh, the Sparrow, if you're familiar with that knife from RMJ. It's kind of that three and a half to four finger grip, depending on your hand size, kind of three and a half for me, but really awesome EDC utility blade. We've got 52100 steel here, so exceptionally tough. Not a stain uh, resistant uh, steel, however, but you only really have to worry about on the edge itself. So if you're maintaining your edge as you go, you're not gonna have to worry about it because we have a coating on the blade and I believe it is a Cerakote. Yes, it's a graphite, almost black Cerakoted finish there to keep rust at bay and give a little bit of extra protection to the steel underneath. I mentioned EDC and they make it easy to EDC with the sheath. Uh, first off, knife with sheath is only about four ounces, so a lot of durability, being this is a full tang fixed blade knife for that kind of weight. And you've got a Kydex sheath with two straps, so you can carry it very easily horizontally. This would work great either small or your back or cross draw. I would really enjoy it myself for that sort of thing. And they're pull the dot snaps too, so they're not gonna come loose, uh, much less likely, I should say, to come loose accidentally. Uh, if that's not your thing, this type of carry, uh, carry method, uh, the whole pattern here is gonna fit both a large and a small tech lock, no problem. So you can carry it a few other ways if you like. Next up, we've got a new version of another EDC fixed blade, the Giant Mouse GMF-1 uh, F-PVD is the full uh, model number for this, 155 right now. M390 blade, PVD coating on the blade itself, but you get a little bit of that stonewashed uh, vibe as well. It's either they stonewashed the, the coating afterwards or I can't imagine you'd actually see anything through the PVD coating if it were like really thin or something but you get a cool stonewash texture going on. It's a very robust blade. You can see how thick it is there, which because there's no handle scales, you want a little bit of extra thickness for that feel in the hand. And speaking of the feel in the hand, all the edges are crowned all the way around. This is an Italian made knife after all. We, uh, we usually expect to see that from uh, the Italian made knives just because they do it so often. And as a result, no hot spots really from the edges of the steel itself. It feels Really nice, about a, about a three finger grip for me personally. Blade steel, I don't know if I mentioned it, is M390. We've got about a 2.6 inch blade length here. Fairly robust, again, a little bit from that blade thickness and also from this kind of modified sheep's foot profile. 
really powerful cutting capabilities. Not the most efficient slicer, but with that almost full flat grind, it's gonna uh, kind of counteract the thickness just a little bit. Now the sheath on this guy is actually leather. This, you know, you might expect to see more something like a Kydex sheath. That would probably be more common, but check out how thick that is too. Really nicely constructed, very finely finished welts, no uh, ragged edges or anything. It's gonna sit nice and flat on your belt with just enough of that handle sticking out where you can get a hold on it and work it loose. This one's a little bit tight right here uh, because it hasn't started to kind of conform around the blade itself. But I think that's a really nicely finished package that you know people might think it's a knife, but it doesn't really scream knife sheath. If maybe just a little bit of the bottom is kind of sticking out beneath the hem of your shirt, it's gonna be a little bit more unobtrusive than certain solutions otherwise might be. All right, next we have a new Benchmade bug out. Uh, made its debut earlier this year, but they finally landed. This is the new aluminum handled version, the 535BK4, uh, if you're interested in the, uh, the alphabet suit nomenclature for this particular one. Uh, price coming in about 234 right now. Now, when Thomas was handling this knife a little bit earlier, he said he liked it, but it didn't really feel like a bug out. Um, and I think that's honestly a good thing personally, whether he does or not. I don't matter. He doesn't matter. <laughs> what I like about the bug out um, is it's such a solid shape. It's a solidly designed shape for usability. Uh, the lightweight nature of it, some folks didn't really like. Uh, it's a very lightweight knife. So I'm really cool, I'm, I'm really pleased to see the platform of the bug out being expanded this year officially by Benchmade. We had a carbon fiber handled version earlier this year, still lightweight, but definitely more rigid uh, than the Grivery. Uh, you can order customized uh, G10 versions from Benchmade themselves, a lot more expensive than buying something off the shelf, but it shows the support they, they're being, that they are putting behind this platform. And now we have this cool aluminum shape. And it's also the first one, um, the, the carbon fiber one very closely mimics the original contours of the Grivery. This aluminum one kind of stakes out its own new shape going on. You can see you have this cool sunburst milling pattern in the aluminum itself. It's kind of a blue gray finish that it has on it. And we've also got upgraded blade material here to go along with the cool handles. M390 in this case, three and a quarter, same length as before and some red accents on the thumb studs and barrel spacers. Yeah, slightly different feel in the hand. You get a little bit more grip, almost like a guiding grip by those milled channels in there. Still feels very comfortable, still feels nice and solid, and you still have that excellent slicing characteristics of that bug out shape. And the knife actually doesn't really get that much more heavy either. We're just two and a half ounces here. Uh, so it's about, what's the old one, 1 1.8? So. You've got specs. I don't have that page open. I think it's 1.8 8 ounces. So you're not uh, you're not sacrificing too much in weight for this guy here. Obviously, if you're if if fractions of an ounce are a concern, like you know, ultralight hiking or what have you, you know, take that as you will. But in the pocket, you're not really going to notice this thing. Axis lock as per usual. I mean, you guys know the drill. Nice ambidextrous lock. Very strong. Very useful. Very good knife. All right. Next up. If you've, uh, if you've looked at kind of the pan shot earlier, you're probably wondering what these uh, leaf-shaped things here are. Uh, so new knives by Granger McCoy. There's an automatic version for 450 and a detent joint version for 425, but they come, both of them, right out of the box in the, another little box, this very finely finished wooden box with the same cutout pattern that you're gonna see on the knife inside, which is primarily a conversation piece. Yes, it's definitely going to cut. I mean, you've got S35 VN blade steel for one thing, but the blade itself also has a bunch of holes cut out in it to kind of mim mimic the look. So could p produce a, a potential spot for some binding depending on what material you're cutting. But if you're just like opening boxes and packages, uh, you know, that sort of thing, maybe letters, Certainly no problem. It's designed to be a conversation piece and a very finely finished one. Uh, blade length, two and a half inches, S35VN, like I mentioned. The detent joint version here, 
works pretty well. You can see you have a little bit of section here at the ricasso of the blade. So even though you don't have any other kind of like flipper tab or anything to keep the blade from moving back, if you're holding it around the pivot, if the blade does come loose, you've got your finger there to uh, hopefully stop it from moving any further. And I gotta say, in the hand, this broad shape actually kind of reminds me of that Winkler a little bit from earlier. But on this smaller scale, it really nestles into the palm quite securely. And even though you can't flip it open, it is a detent joint, so you can flip it closed pretty nicely. Opens real easily, even with just a simple thumb, or you can two-hand open it, no problem. As for the auto, same thing, you just have a push button. As you can see, it opens up quite well. Design, exactly the same. Materials, exactly the same. Feels good, looks cool, just with that really, really snappy push button action. That's definitely gonna be more the conversation piece, for sure, even more so than the detent joint. Keeping things along the uh, kind of small, cool little items train, we have a small keychain or neck knife. Uh, you could kind of carry it either way you like. Uh, this is called the Bottle Butcher by Berg Blades. Comes in 45 bucks. So for something from them, fairly reasonably priced actually. Uh, you've got a 440C blade, one and a half inches long, very stout cleaver shape with flat grinds, pretty sharp edge as well. And this particular one has natural micarta, but there's a couple different options right now. Now that we do have over here, a small Kydex sheath. And as you can see at the top there, they left a cutout so you can actually access the bottle opener from the outside without taking it off the sheath. So it could stay, uh, or taking it out of the sheath. So you could keep it on your keychain even if you were gonna go and use that. So carry it either keychain style, and in that case, you're gonna have some extra length from your keys to give you even more grip, because otherwise it's kind of a one and a half to two finger grip, depending on the size of your fingers. Or you could just carry it as a small neck knife if you wanted to do that instead. And I guess with the introduction of the bottle opener, this is technically a multi-tool. It is. Which I think means that this multi-tool is technically not a multi-tool, because it doesn't have a bottle opener. Well, you shouldn't be drinking and rescuing, rescuing people anyway, so maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's not that funny, but it was funny to me. That's okay. Uh, got another cleaver next, uh, and this is a real cool one. New brand for us here, new maker for us here at the Knife Center. This is Nicholas Nichols Knives. This is his mini cleaver, and in addition to looking cool, there's a cool story behind it as well. So I'll get to the story in a minute. Uh, I'll go through the rest of the knife first. This is actually designed to be an EDC pocket fixed blade. Comes with a very nicely finished leather pocket slip. No clip or anything, uh, but with this wide shape, it should sit pretty flat in your front pocket. Maybe your back pocket too, if, you're, uh, if you are into that sort of thing. But it's gonna sit real, or it does sit really nicely in my front pockets though. Really, really well finished, like I mentioned. Stitched nicely, nice dyed edges folded over edge here at the top. And depending on the handle material you get, it's gonna be dyed to match the handle material a little bit. And right now we've got three. But coming in about 250 bucks right now, uh, we've got a natural micarta and a red maple as well. But this particular one, and here's where the story comes in, is actually Battleship Teak is what we're calling it, or it's what Nick Nichols is calling it actually. The wood here, uh, actually comes from decking from the USS North Carolina, which was the essentially the most decorated battleship in World War II, and it's permanently anchored just a couple miles, like a mile or two from Nick's shop. And he's actually worked with them. He's the officially recognized knife maker in partnership with the historical museum there. So he gets to put the teak decking wood on the knife itself. Really, really cool story, I think. Well, I hope they put new decking down when they pick that up. I think that it's, it's kind of like with the Sherman tanks earlier. They were restoring it and they salvaged the material. Don't be a smart aleck. Well, I wouldn't want anyone to fall through a hole. <laughs> Thomas broke me. I don't know what to do with you sometimes, buddy. <laughs> but anyway, back to the knife. Um, 
Nitro V blade steel here. Really cool stainless steel, very tough with the, uh, the hand hammered finish in it. It's not, a, not actually a blacksmithed finish as far as I know. Uh, I believe this ought to be a, uh, a stock removal knife, but with some hand hammering in there that looks really neat. Edges are all nicely finished. You can see it's not a flat spine here where it joins up. It's all perfectly rounded, which is hard to do very consistently. And he does it very consistently here. Nice crowned edge on the spine as well. About a uh, three finger grip for me. The, my pinky finger falls off the back a little bit, but you do have a lanyard point here if you want to extend your grip. But it is a pretty secure grip, even though it is just a three finger knife. And you've got a pretty aggressive blade or a pretty powerful feeling blade in the hand for everyday utility. Some might say food prep and yeah, you could probably do that in a pinch, but you know, this is a short blade we're dealing with. I mean, you know, sub three inches there, uh, but just a really awesome and really stylish EDC piece. Speaking of really awesome stylish EDC pieces, I uh, have a small selection or a, a small number of new LT Wright Lil Mucks right now. A uh, bit of a fancier version than uh, most of the Lil Mucks they make. These guys come in at about 130 bucks. 3V blade steel here, two and a half inches long, and just decked out with all these awesome, awesome touches. File work along the, uh, the spine of the knife for starters, and then jigged yellow bone on top of black liners for the handles. It looks really cool. Each one, of course, is going to be a little bit different, both in the jigging pattern and the, uh, the coloration. You can see the back side of this one has more kind of dark voids than the front does. Each one's gonna be a bit unique, which is pretty cool. It's just a really <laughs> cool piece. I mean, you guys know I love, uh, I love Nest Mucks, so I do have a, a handful of Lil Mucks from LT in my collection. I had to pick one of these up myself as well because it's just so dang cool. Sheath is black, it is leather, and fairly wide but you could carry this easily on the belt or with the two grommets here at the top, you could carry this as a neck knife if you wished. But I just think you ought to carry it because in addition to looking cool, it's gonna be a nice useful little shape. Holds in the hand quite nicely, just enough blade length for a small utility knife day to day. It's not gonna be anything much more than that given the size, but that's okay because when it looks this good, I definitely wanna carry mine. All right, I'm gonna completely shift fixed blade gears here and go from small and charming to uh, big and overbuilt. This is just one of a huge new batch of Dawson knives that we've got in stock. This is the Custom Bodyguard. Uh, comes in at about 390. Pretty expensive week uh, this week, you guys. Sorry about that. Uh, that's just what's new this particular week. Blade steel here, 3V, six and a quarter inches very large handle here. I mean, you guys have heard me say a thousand times that I've got slightly larger than average hands. Look how much of that I still have out on the back. So this is gonna work not just for the big handed folks out there, but if anyone needs to be wearing a pair of gloves while, you're, while they're using this knife, you've got plenty of length on the grip there. So you're not gonna be too cramped to be able to actually use the knife, which you, know, you wanna actually be able to use the knife because you've got that nice tough 3V steel here hollow grind on these guys to uh, keep the edge a little bit thinner. We do have like, uh, looks about 3 16 on the blade thickness itself. And you've got a two tone finish on this one, kind of black hollows and more of a satin rubbed flats, but there are some crazier kind of gold tone finishes they do as well. Now, I think the coolest thing about this knife uh, for me in particular, uh, other than the black and red G10, which looks really good, is the way the cross guard is handled here. Obviously a cross guard is a very uh, combat centric uh, styling or a, a combat centric design feature uh, designed to protect your digits from a, uh, an, an opponent's blade essentially is the, is the primary reason. But I like the way they've done it here for a couple of reasons because it, it kind of gets around uh, some of the compromises that are introduced to a design when a cross guard is put in place. Now the front side, tilts down towards your hand, gives you good index finger protection, but the treatment on the backside really transforms uh, the usability here. You do have a bit of a thumb ramp because it curls forward rather than back towards the hand, lets you push on that blade steel very nicely. And it also, because of that hook, is really gonna trap anything uh, coming down on that. But more importantly for me is, one of the things I typically don't like about cross guards is if you need to choke up for finer work on the blade, there's no way to do it because it gets right in the way. By having this finger choil combined with that curl forward, 
it gets around that. So curl forward and the kind of diagonal angle it sits along the axis at as well. But you can actually curl your thumb over and choke up and do some finer work. Now I do have uh, pretty big fingers myself. The uh, cir circumference of them is pretty big, so I'd probably want to widen this troy out a little bit. But really nice way to get around that particular thing. Sheath on this knife is black and leather, just like uh, the knife we just looked at. Typical kind of old school style. You've got a retention loop, no snap, but you got a nice brass post there and a panel on the back with belt loops to keep it a little bit lower on, the, on your belt. It's not going to be super high and hopefully not digging into your side. All right, next up, we've got some new ADV button lock flippers, the Javelin, uh, which is a little bit smaller than some of the other button lock flippers they've done in the past, maybe a little bit more EDC friendly. Uh, 340 bucks, uh, blade length, even though we're smaller here, three and five eighths of an inch long. So you still have plenty to work with, especially with the amount of belly here and the recurve section here at the back, which adds a little bit of length and works really well on the pull cuts as well due to its angle. Steel is D2, you've got a black coating, you've got thumb studs as well as the flipper here at the bottom. So you can open it up either one of those ways, flip it or thumb stud it. And I realized I just did it backwards as I was saying what I was doing things, but that's okay. Man, words are failing me today. That's not a good sign. No, it's not. Please forgive me, folks. A uh, few different colors, uh, as you might expect, uh, both black coated and satin coated versions and different inlay colors. This one is the purple G10, which just looks so cool against the black. Button lock release itself, you can see here is this rectangular button, not just a, uh, a simple post style of button. Works really well. You can see that action is so nice. You can actually, you can even do the centrifugal wrist flick, kind of push the button down flick your wrist, oh so satisfying to use. We've got a milled pocket clip here at the back, several finger grooves. Uh, one of the things that, uh, that happened when they scaled this down is the feel is definitely a bit different for me. I want to kind of pull my pinky on the back side of the beak here just because of the size of my fingers. Your mileage may of course vary, but when it's this satisfying to use, you're going to get a lot out of this guy. All right, next up, we've got a couple new fixed blades from Jake McCoy. We had a Granger McCoy earlier. Coincidence? Yeah, probably. Uh, but two designs here. We've got the Cyrax, this Karambit style design, and we have this modified sheep's foot fixed blade, which is called the Exodus. Uh, price on both of these is the same, 750 bucks, quite pricey. Uh, and specs are pretty much the same as well. We've got S35 VN blades with acid washed finishes, and the handles themselves are really cool. It's a carbon fiber called uh, copper camo carbon fiber handles. You can see we've got layers of carbon, the, you get the, the dark layers there, and you've got layers of copper as well, shimmering as you move around, which is pretty darn neat. Now the karambit is rather interesting. You've got, of course, the standard reverse hold through the index finger ring there. And even though the blade is curved back the way, opposite the way most karambits would be, the sharpened edge is still facing your knuckles like a karambit would be as well. So obviously there are some very specific martial techniques to using a blade like this, but with this style of blade, it might be a little more useful for some folks EDC wise as well, since it's a little bit easier to handle or a little bit more intuitive to handle if you're not used to the hawk bill shape. Of course, if you're going for utility, I think the sheep's foot is definitely a little bit better of the way to go. Hollow ground, uh, I think, yeah, both of these knives are hollow ground. Edges are nice and thin and very sharp. Yeah, I mean, I really enjoy a very thin edge and you definitely get that here. The handle here, same materials, bit on the angular side, but it nestles in pretty well with a slightly uh, forward pointed grip, kind of like one of the knives we looked at earlier, that, uh, that, that uh, the Winkler. Man, words today, sorry. Maybe we should let the knives do the talking. It's a good idea because it's a really cool knife. Um, yeah, another great combination of kind of style piece with some good utility baked into it as well. Uh, as far as the sheaths, we've got essentially a carbon fiber style kydex. Uh, no belt attachment hardware is included. I will say though the whole pattern on the uh, the hawkbill blade there 
or the Karambit will work with a large tech lock, uh, but the hole patterns on this particular uh, sheep's foot don't line up to, uh, to a large or a small, so you might have to come up with a different solution if you want to carry it on your belt. All right, that is all I've got time for you today, which is great because as you could see, my words were just slipping away from me as we went along. Uh, thanks for checking out uh, these knives. If you want to get your hands on any of them, we'll leave links in the description as always to take you over to knifecenter.com. And make sure you Knife Rewards our program sign up because if you're gonna knife spend money today, you're gonna get free money for program. We had a bot write that. <laughs> I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, signing off. See you next time.